Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is David here at IP Quality Score. Today we're going to do a quick demo of the Proxy VPN Detection API and the fraud scoring component of it. Uh, this is the main dashboard here where you can kind of see your uh, recent API usage. This is a demo account so we don't have too much traffic going right now. Um, we're going to navigate over here to the Proxy VPN Detection API and let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation. Um, so you'll notice that your API key um, is right here at the top. Make sure to keep this private. Um, we do have a few example URLs here of how to look things up. So as you can see, this is the main base of the request URL. And you can go ahead and pass an IP address at the end here. Um, now this is where we can also pass additional parameters. Um, the strictness is one of the most popular settings. Uh, it allows you to pretty much get as strict or lenient as you'd like to get with the lookup. Um, starting at zero is the least strict option. We recommend starting at that level and then working your way up from there so that you don't have any false positives. Everybody has different requirements so we try to make as many settings as possible so you can you know, make the service kind of a perfect fit for your traffic, for your lookups, any type of uh, business logic that you're performing with our APIs. Additionally, uh, passing the user agent really helps us get greater insight into the user. So you'll notice that that's also an option here that you can pass at the end. Um, we'll scroll down a little bit further here to look at the parameters that you can pass. So again, we have the strictness here. Um, zero to five is the range. Um, we really recommend zero to three. We don't recommend really going above three. Um, and zero or even one are really the most popular settings. So somewhere between there is probably a good fit. If you're still having a lot of fraud, you could increase to level two. And like we talked about before, passing the browser, the full user agent string really helps our insight into the user. Um, so we do recommend passing that data. Um, it's optional though, and uh, so are the rest of these variables here. Um, user language, again, is um, you know another variable that gives us more insight into the user, can help our fraud scoring. Um, the data for these two uh, variables is factored into the fraud score output on the API. Um, we do also have a fast option, so if you are needing really fast results, our API is already pretty fast and we're always working to make it faster. But if you need you know, super duper fast results here, you can go ahead and set this option to true. And we'll go ahead and we'll skip some of the tests that can take longer and we'll return an instant result. Um, we do have an update coming out soon which is about to make the APIs overall a, a lot faster in general. Uh, this is, if you're not passing the user agent, you can go ahead and let us know um, when a request is from a mobile device. We do adjust the scoring for that, um, as we're always trying to provide the most accurate results. So if you're not passing the user agent, and it is a mobile request, you'll want to go ahead and pass mobile equals true in the API request to let us know. Um, now these two settings are, are somewhat newer. Um, the allow public access points is, um, Pretty useful for avoiding false positives if you don't want to be super strict and you don't want to block ranges from uh, universities, schools, uh, institutions, corporations, businesses, you know, such as a hotel, um, things like that. Uh, maybe, you know, a Starbucks, you know, Wi Fi hotspot, something like that. So if you're okay with taking traffic from there, you can go ahead and set this option to true. We'll still go ahead and block the riskiest IPs in these blocks, but we won't outright block the ranges for these um, for these groups of IPs. And then we'll get into transaction strictness in a little bit here, farther down the page. Um, right now, all I'll say on it is that you can adjust how strict you'd like to be when scoring. Um, you know, this is mainly for chargebacks and user data, things like that. If you're going to be passing as billing or shipping information or user information like an address, phone number, um, we an email, we will adjust the scoring for that with this parameter. It's basically like the strictness parameter above, but strictly for the transaction settings. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the output here of the data. Um, we're going to let you know if it's a proxy. If it is a VPN or Tor connection, proxy will always be true. Um, the same isn't true vice versa, like it could be a VPN, um, it could be a, a Tor connection. Um, 
usually so usually one of these but these won't always be true proxy will always be true if it's a bad connection and a high risk connection if vpn is true though then proxy will also be true so this is kind of a, a catch-all for if it's a vpn or tor or just an open proxy in general um, we'll let you know the host name here uh, we also return the isp usually the isp is the same as the organization but it can vary Sometimes there is a parent company. Uh, the ASN, you know, which group the IP belongs to. Some of this data you don't need, but we try to provide as much data as possible. Um, we do also provide a good amount of geodata, such as the country code, uh, the city, region. This is pretty much, you know, a state if you're in the US. Uh, the time zone of the IP address, um, geo coordinates, so latitude and longitude. Um, if you are passing, we can do this without the user agent as well. So we will always check uh, the host name to see if it's a crawler or not. So even people that are spoofing as a Google bot will be able to detect if they actually are a crawler or not. So if you are using this on a front end site where you could get an SEO penalty for blocking you know, bots and things like that, the most popular bots such as Bingbot, Googlebot, Yandex, DuckDuckGo, all of the major bots will be detected by our system here, by do as well. Um, recent abuse is really a great tool. This setting will let you know if we've seen confirmed fraud from this IP address within the past few days. So, you know, usually when this is true, this IP that you're looking up would be a very high risk IP address. So you probably wouldn't want to accept a transaction from it, wouldn't want to take, you know, an ad click from it. This is definitely a bad IP address. Um, and it's, you know, kind of like we talked about before, VPN, um, if it's a VPN connection, will be true or false. Same thing for Tor. If we do notice that the, based on the user agent, that the device is a mobile device, this will be true. So you can use this in your own logic on your end. And um, we do factor all of this data, as well as, you know, the recent abuse, how risky the IP address is. That's going to be factored into the fraud score. So we typically recommend scores over 75 to be considered a high risk click. This can vary for any type of site. So some sites, you know, you might be at 65 or above, or some sites you might be at 85 and above. So you really want to get a feel of your traffic and then decide what works best for you. Uh, the request ID is a unique identifier for the lookup, so you can later on pass us a postback or conversion notice with the request ID. You can go ahead and uh, perform other functions with the API to look up by request ID. So if you are going to contact our server for more info later on, you would want to record this data point. Um, if you are passing the user agent, then we'll let you know the OS, you know, the browser, if it has a device brand or model. And uh, the message, these are just general terms for an API, and this will usually just say success. Um, we can look at a block of text real quick here. So this would be an example output. Pretty straightforward. And we're always looking to add more data points to our API. Um, we do also offer an XML version if you prefer to work with that. Um, here are a few errors. So if you do have an invalid IP, it would look something like this. Um, if your account is out of credits, this would be a message that you would see. And uh, let's quickly just discuss a few more things on the documentation page. So here's an example with PHP. This is a really handy example because, you know, we, we do have a lot of options in here so you can easily adjust the strictness you know, if you want to allow public access points, it's automatically going to input the user agent, the language, pull the IP address, all that good stuff. And then for the logic behind it, so you'll see this is a bit complicated, but it's all automatic. You can just pretty much adjust the settings here. So you're setting a minimum fraud score for anything above this level you would block out. So this is for overall, and then this would be just for mobile devices. Now this uh, setting for mobile devices will only work when you have the lower penalty for mobiles equal to true. So right now it's, it's off by default. But if you did have this enabled, we would look at the fraud score block for mobiles when a mobile device was detected. 
And so for mobiles, because mobile IPs can be recycled so often, we don't consider, there's, there's a lot of mobile IPs that can come back as a proxy, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad user on them at the time. Mobile IPs are shared by, you know, a lot of users at one time. So if, if it's a mobile IP, we're really only going to block if it's a VPN, a Tor connection, or if the fraud score is greater than the minimum that we show here. If it's not a mobile device, then we'll go ahead by the minimum fraud score, and then we'll just do a check overall to see if it's a proxy, because this would also include if it's a VPN or Tor connection would be factored into this. Now this is a unique feature and something that's that's pretty new for our API, but um, we've received really great feedback so far. So we're now also scoring billing and shipping data. So if you're handling credit cards, or maybe if your site is just collecting addresses in general, so let's maybe you have users signing up on your site and you wanna make sure they're providing legitimate info. If you're not capturing both billing and shipping data, you can go ahead and just use one of the blocks. I'd recommend only using the billing data if you just have one address per user. If you have two addresses, then go ahead and enter them in into each block. Um, we're gonna score every data point here. So we're gonna look at the phone number, You know, see if we've had abuse, same thing for pretty much every data point here. For the address, we're actually gonna perform address verification. So if we notice an invalid address, this user's fraud score is going to be elevated. Same thing for the email here. We're not doing a full email checkup, but we're gonna do a quick check to see if it's disposable. We're gonna to check to see if the email had recent abuse across our network and uh, similar factors like that. If you wanna do a full email lookup to make sure that the inbox is actually valid and activated, go ahead and use our email verification API. That would provide a lot more data about the email. But uh, you know, usually users just want kind of fast data for this and we're gonna provide, we're gonna do the quickest checks we can to provide the greatest accuracy. Uh, same thing for the shipping data. Um, we're gonna you know, perform address verification here. The fraud score will be elevated if it's an invalid address. We're gonna go ahead and let, we're also gonna look at the email and phone. Uh, you can also pass this credit card info as well. So the bin is the first six digits, which is the bank identification number. Um, for a hash, we wanna you know, make sure we're following the best practices for passing a credit card. Um, you should, if you're gonna pass this data to us, make sure it's in a SHA-256 hash so that it's encrypted. We'll go ahead and check our database for similar hashes that have had fraud. Um, this stuff is also pretty self-explanatory. You can pass you know, the expiration date, the order amount, the order quantity. I mean, all this info is optional. You don't have to pass any of this data. You can pass you know, as little as one of these variables or as many as you'd like, but all this data will help us score the user better. So always try to provide as much data as you can. And then uh, lower down the page, not everybody's familiar with this, but these are postback and conversion notices. It's pretty popular in you know, the affiliate and ad network space. Um, if you're scoring clicks, you're gonna wanna let us know when you've had a converted lead. Um, you can do something similar where, you know, if you're getting a purchase on, you know, for users, you can go ahead and mark that purchase as converted. Um, so just go ahead and take a look at some of this data here. As you can see, um, this would be your unique postback link, and then you would pass something like a request ID here. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and pass custom variables as well. So you would set these on your account settings, but um, this could be a user ID, a transaction ID, um, you know, an order ID, anything like that that you're passing to us. You would pass that in the initial API lookup and then you're able to retrieve that data with a postback. So if there are, let's say there's multiple requests for transaction ID 99, we're going to pull the latest record that we have in our database for your account under transaction ID 99. So if there are multiple records for the same data point, you'll always get the most recent. But we do recommend passing by request ID. It's just more efficient, it's a little faster, and you'll make sure that you're getting the correct record. Um, so real quick, let's just go through a few other points here. So you can always do a live lookup in our in our system. Um, it's not going to pass 
the user agent so it's not going to be as accurate you don't have as many options here as on the API um, but you know if you ever need to do a quick lookup this is the way to do it um, you can also run a CSV report at any time and let's just go take a look at reports real quick so we'll run a report for today we don't have much action going on here but as you can see this IP address is definitely bad we checked it with a strictness one um, and we did pass a user agent so we have the operating system in the browser um, let's say you wanted to add more columns here or let's say you even want to go to export results it will only export results of what you have pulled in this report so if you want to add more data to the column here like let's say we want to add the ISP we'll go ahead add that in now we have the ISP here on the table we can export for full results at any time we can export this page and a CSV will be downloaded um, so if you are looking to get more data, just come in here and you can kind of select anything you want. You can also select your own variables that you're passing. They'll be at the end. So for my account, I have user ID, sub user ID, campaign ID, you know, similar things like that. So if you have custom tracking variables, they will appear at the end. Um, so let's pull a report here with user ID. So this one was under user ID 20. So we can view that. Um, if you did want to search by user ID 20, you can just come in here we're using the search feature here and we're going to type in 20 and now let's look at that so now we're pulling all data for user 20 um, similarly I mean a lot of our users that are sending a lot of traffic from a, a subsource or you know have a lot of lookups from the same you know from different groups of users you can go ahead and get a report of an average fraud score from that subsource so let's look at user ID right now we're just going to pull a quick report here and you'll see user ID 20 the average for today is 90 so that's a pretty risky user we only have one request so it's not a lot of data but if you did have a whole page of users here you could sort by the average you could see the riskiest users you know you might want to suspend these users you might want to give them extra scrutiny extra verification maybe limit them on how much access they have to parts of your site but uh, this page is definitely very handy for getting you know average stats and you can you can select any variables that you have here. You can always add more variables or change the names of these. Um, so that about wraps it up. Um, you know, overall we also have you know a quick page here with just your stats of how how many good and bad clicks and your latest records. Um, feel free to contact support if you have any questions. We're always happy to help. We want to make sh make sure that you guys are always have the best settings optimized for your account. Um, so we're always happy to help. Thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed the video.